أخي صبرا على ألم الفراق When I returned from Guantanamo, I was constantly thinking about uh, the brothers still held in prison there. And from that day to this, I have never forgotten. Not one day has gone by without them being in my thoughts and my prayers. Today is uh, exceptionally powerful. I'm seeing in front of me relatives of people that are still held there. I'm seeing children whose, fathers, uh, whose father is still in Guantanamo. One child in particular has never seen his father since his father's been in Guantanamo for the duration of his entire life. I'm seeing people whose children have been detained in the UK on extradition orders and have never been charged with a crime. I see in front of me people who were held in Guantanamo for years on end. And if that I was there for three years, they were there for seven or eight years. So it's very overwhelming for me. And I'm often used to speaking in public, but I'm finding this daunting. And one of the things that I did when I returned was to try to look for portals of information where I could find the latest news about Guantanamo. And I found myself visiting cageprisoners.com almost every day, sometimes several times a day. And within months, I volunteered for the organization. And shortly after that, I began to work for it. Next, um, I'd like to invite uh, Amir Suleiman to come and deliver what I think is one of the most powerful spoken word pieces I've ever heard in my entire life. And, and I say that as somebody who's written poetry in Guantanamo myself. Uh, Amir Suleiman is an acclaimed artist of the written of the spoken word and has come all the way from the United States of America to be with us here today. Uh, he, when I told him at an event that I saw him, jumped at the chance and, uh, of the opportunity and welcome the opportunity to come to this event to speak and to deliver his words, as I said, which I think are some of the most powerful that I've ever heard. So, Amir Suleiman. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? That was a pitiful response. <laughs> I flew all the way from the United States, for goodness sake. At least I can get a decent salam, a cake for halak or something. I haven't eaten. Just trying to fast still. It'd be nice, you know, if you guys were nice to me, because I'm a guest and I have rights. <laughs> <laughs> this is the UK. Forget about it. <laughs> so let's let's try again. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum salam. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I'm gonna share a poem with you. Um, this poem, this poem has four, four reasons for being. Number one, it is a poem of desperation. Number two, it is a poem to remind those who would like to be reminded. Number three, it is a poem to remind those who would like not to be reminded. And number four, it is to inform those that don't know. Uh, the four reasons is the, the, um, the common introduction I give to this poem. I just want to say a little more about it before I do the poem, in honor of this particular event. When I say the poem was born out of desperation, the poem was born out of us seeing injustices, and particularly this, this issue of Guantanamo Bay, and it feeling so far away, and it feeling so big, and so intimidating. Um, not intimidating such that it would create fear, but intimidating meaning like, how do I even, where do I even start? What do, what can I do? And the feeling of not being able to do anything. And that is what fueled the fire of this poem. To I say this is a poem to remind those who would like to be reminded. You are all here, so I count you among those who would like to be reminded. You want to know more. You want to know how to help. I say this is a poem for those who would like not to be reminded. Because sometimes when something is so intimidating and so big and so, uh, um, when it feels like it is so much stronger than you are, it is impenetrable. The safety that the heart seeks is in indifference or in ignoring so that you can sleep at night, 
so that you can enjoy your children, so that you can, you know, watch football and have a normal life, you would just like to forget because it's like you can't do anything, so there's no use in me thinking about it. It is a way for the heart to escape just to forget. And I myself am guilty of this. And so all these reasons that I'm explaining, they're all pertaining to myself. And then I say this is to inform those that don't know. Because some people, they just go into work, they come home, they sit down, watch football, drink a beer, go to sleep, wake up, go back to work, so on like this forever. And not you, of course, you guys don't drink beer. <laughs> I hope. So, uh, but there are people who just don't know that maybe they would care, maybe they would help, but they just don't have any knowledge of it. So, uh, so that is what, this, this is, that is what wrote this poem. I am not angry. I am anger. I am not dangerous. I am danger. I am abominable stress, Ileonic relentless. I'm a breath of vengeance. I'm a death sentence. I'm forsaken repentance of the beast and its henchmen, armed forces and policemen. I survive of oil in prisons until the cup runneth over with lost souls that were oversized caps like blindfolds, shiny necklaces like lost souls, dragging them into black holes. And I may have to holler at Fidel Castro to keep my other brother out of Guantanamo. And the innocence on death row. It's probably in the same proportion as the criminals in black robes that smack gavels, that smash homes, that smack gavels, that crack domes. Justice is somewhere between reading sad poems and 40 ounces of gasoline crash with the windows. Justice is between plans and action, between writing letters to congressmen and clapping the captain, between raising legal defense funds and putting a gun on the bailiff and taking a judge captive. It is between prayer and fasting, between burning and blasting. Freedom is between the mind and the soul. It's between the lock and the load, between the view of the young and the patience of the old. Freedom is between the finger and the trigger, between the page and the pen, between the grenade and the pen, between righteous and keeping one in the chamber. So what can they do with a man with a heart like Turner, a mind like Douglas, a mouth like Malcolm, and a voice like Chris? That's why I am not dangerous, I am danger. I am not angry, I am anger. I am abominable stress, silly, out of relentless. I'm a death of vengeance, I'm a breath of vengeance. I'm a death sentence to the beast and his henchmen, politicians and big businessmen. I'm a teenage Palestinian, opening fire at an Israeli checkpoint, point blank checkmate. Now what? I'm an inmate with a sharp shank to the CEO, earlobe to earlobe, cut short, case closed. Now what? I am sitting bull with Colonel Custard's scalp in my hands. I am Sin K with a slave trader's blood on my hands. I am Jonathan Jackson handing a gun to my man. I am David with a slingshot and a rock. And if David lived today, he'd have a Molotov cocktail and a Glock. So I say down with Goliath. I say down with Goliath. But we must learn, know, write, read. We must kick. Bite, yell, scream, we must pray, fast, live, dream, fight, kill, and die free. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar.